Good morning. So I decided this is how I'm going to respond to any inquiries about um, the horse that I've posted, okay? Uh, he is a 15-year-old, I'm going to say quarter horse. I don't know exactly what breed he is. I'm going to say he's a quarter horse. He may or may not be papered. I don't know those details. Those details never have mattered to me. Um, I made this offer to a client uh, based on knowing the horse, not necessarily, um, it wasn't like a service that I offer to people that are looking to rehome their horses. This is a horse that I've met through um, a training inquiry and I've worked with the horse a couple times. Fell in love with the horse because he needs somebody to believe in him so he can believe in himself. He's not dangerous. He's uh, just very, very worried. He has what I would consider um, people-pleasing anxiety. He's very, very worried about making people unhappy. He does not want to upset somebody. So I'm gonna guess, without having the actual knowledge, I'm going to guess he's probably been handled with a heavy hand at some point in his life or much of his life. Um, he's very, very worried about doing the wrong thing. He's so obedient that it's actually sad. Um, when he does something, he comes and he really checks in, you know, he'll come and be like, oh, did I do okay? You know, and that breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when they're that worried about your approval. So those kinds of horses get under my skin a little bit and far as far as like they get into my heart. Um, I don't always offer people um, my, my concern to this level of let me help you find a new home for him. Um, the reason he's looking for a new home is because the owner does have multiple horses and his needs are kind of like a one horse uh, owner, not a multiple horse owner. The dedication in time has to be more concentrated on him and this owner recognizes that for this horse. Um, so that's why this decision was made. When she let me know that, I sat on it for a few days and then I made her this offer. The offer is that the horse is gonna come here for 30 days. I'm gonna to get to spend those 30 days desperately trying to give this horse a little bit of comfort, emotional comfort, mental comfort. And in that process, I thought, wow, what a better way to help him get the right home by including potential future owners in his uh, education, including the people so that they can see where he started and then where they, as a, as a um, partnership, developed. The language is being learned by both of you, so therefore you know what each other actually knows. Um, I decided I'm going to do it that way. I also decided I'm going to do it with three people, or at least if that can be done. I'm gonna do it with three people. I really would like to do it with three people who come together so all three people learn at the same time what he's learning and where he's at and it's also gonna be kind of like a socialization for him um, if the life he's going to be living in his future has multiple people in his world, right? Uh, you know, a mother-daughter, you know, something like that. Um, it's going to be healthy for him to have uh, those exposures, but in a controlled environment. That's why I also said in my post that he would be probably a better horse to be in someone's backyard versus a multi-hand um, stable where it's just some, somebody's bringing them in and out, not really caring about what the horse knows or doesn't know, um, or making assumptions on what the horse knows or doesn't know. I want him to have the best promise I can make him to have a educated person handling him. And educated meaning educated to, to him, okay? <coughs> I want to make a promise to him that the next people who talk to him can communicate with him. I want to make him that promise. I think that that's an important promise to make all horses. But this particular horse, I don't want to see him 
not get the perfect home. Not all horses get in my heart like that, that belong to other people, but he did, and now it's important to me that he finds the perfect home. All horses should get the perfect home, but this horse I've actually met, so. Um, that being said, I would like to try to get three people that can come together. Uh, I'd like those three people to be able to dedicate three days a week to this horse for four weeks. Now, here's where I'm going to start telling you where you don't qualify. If you cannot dedicate three days a week to the vetting out process, then that leads me to believe you cannot dedicate three days a week to the ownership process. And therefore, he's not the right horse for you. A horse that just gets put in a stable and visited on Saturdays is not this horse, okay? Some horses can be those horses. That's not this horse, and that's not what I want for this horse. I need somebody that's going to be dedicated to his uh, comfort and you know, I would even describe it right now as rehabilitation into being comfortable in his own skin. He's not dangerous, but he is very unconfident. And confidence is a muscle. Confidence is not something you're born with. Confidence is something that you develop. It's a skill set. It's something that you can uh, be taught. And he can be taught to be confident. And I want whoever works with him that ends up owning him to know where he started and know how to protect the confidence that he does build. It is going to be a, uh, there will be a fee for the 12 weeks or, or 12 weeks, the 12 sessions. Um, I charge $40 an hour. So at three days a week, you know, you're talking $120 a week. And is it possible at the end of four weeks, He's not your horse. Yes. If that is something that you don't think about in the sense that your mission is only to get the horse and to not recognize the value of the education that you're going to get, then there's a good chance that you don't need to respond further than this uh, video. I worry about anybody who says I can't afford that because Acquiring a horse is the cheapest part. And if you can't afford to, um, to invest in your education with the horse, then chances are you can't afford the horse if he gets sick. You can't afford the horse if he ends up needing shoes. He is barefoot, but if he ends up needing shoes, um, if you can't afford to invest in your education with the horse, there's a good chance you can't afford other things that he might need. So you wouldn't be considered under those circumstances either. So you won't be considered if you cannot dedicate your time and you won't be considered if your finances are your strongest consideration. I'm not saying that, you know, if you keep him in your backyard and you only have to give him good grain and hay, that he's not going to be a cheap, he's an easy keeper. He's a hardy guy. Um, so he, I'm sure he's fairly inexpensive to maintain that way. He's barefoot, so I know he'd be fairly inexpensive to maintain that way. He's healthy. He's not on any medications or anything, so I know he'd be fairly inexpensive that way. But right now, he needs somebody who's willing to invest a little money in getting an education with him. And if that education ends up being where you still walk away without a horse, if you have any interest in ever being good with horses, I promise you the work that you would do with me will make you the person that everybody comes to in the barn for help. My horse is doing this, my horse is doing that. Can you can you come look at this? Can you help me with this? You will become the person that people want your help. Um, if you have an interest in you know being good with horses, if you have an interest in maybe pursuing a training career, this is certainly an opportunity to get an education that you would not otherwise be given an opportunity to get because I don't actually teach lessons under these circumstances. I, you know, I mean, I, I think I, I would book somebody three days a week if they really wanted to come three days a week, but um, generally speaking, that's not my normal lesson program. Okay, so um, 
basically, yeah, I mean, that's not my normal lesson program. That is my normal tra training program. So basically, you're coming in and you're getting to be a part of this horse's training. Um, that is a gift, to be perfectly honest with you, because I don't usually let people be a part of a horse's training like this if a horse comes to me for training. So, again, if that interests you, great. If, uh, if finances are a stronger input, you know, a stronger uh, thought process or factor here, then, you know, it's okay that we don't communicate beyond this video. If your time and lack of time is a factor, again, it's okay if we don't communicate beyond this video. Uh, just know that my heart is with finding the right people or person, I should say, for this horse. And it's nothing personal, but if, you know, if you don't meet the criteria coming in the door, you know, there's no sense in us communicating beyond that for this horse. I mean, certainly can be available to lessons for your horse or for another horse that you get, but for this horse, it wouldn't be a match.